What did one French guy say to the other? I was hoping you could tell me because I don't speak French. My Papagator patron, Trail Reeves, just sent me that joke, and I feel like it's applicable in the sense that as a Catholic in the 21st century, as somebody who chose to convert to Catholicism, I feel like sometimes when I'm talking to people who aren't Catholic or are fallen away Catholics, it feels like I'm talking in a completely different language. The concept that I would think that morality would be important, that what we base morality within is different than what society would say. And so I want to delve in a little bit today about how being Catholic in the 21st century affects us and how we can be a vessel for change, a vessel for the Holy Spirit in these tumultuous times. So I'm Allie Marie, and this is My Catholic Perspective. If you're new here, um, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button, notification, be notified every Thursday at 3 p.m. for new videos. And if you're returning, welcome back. Um, I am doing my book review next week. At, next week, every The last Thursday of every month is book review day, and I am currently about two-thirds of the way through The Jewish Roots of the Eucharist by Dr. Uh, Brent Petre. And it's really good. I mean, I grew up uh, in a Calvinist style school. I went to private Christian schools. And, um, and a lot of it I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with the Judeo-Christian roots of Christianity. And uh, moving further into it from a Catholic perspective, there are definitely pieces that I'm learning. So I'm excited to be able to share some of those with you guys next week. But it really has triggered this discussion point in me about the fact that I did choose to convert to Catholicism when I was 21 years old. I'm 28 now. And this whole concept that it was seemingly countercultural. In our culture, everything says, like, if it feels right, go for it. And so I've spoken out a few different times, you know, a few weeks ago, I talked about like same sex attraction that I experienced. And I got a lot of comments about how I should just do what feels right. And I'm suppressing myself and doing all these things that are just terrible for my well being. And I find it intriguing because for me, from my Catholic perspective, what feels right is not acting on those feelings. And if I do slip up or if I do like feel a particular way and like I don't stop and redirect and do something else, um, I do feel like relief and a uh, peace going to confession. I feel a peace in talking about it and being like, hey, I like I screwed up, I, you know, whatever happened. And so for, for me, from the basis of morality that we are coming from, there is an element of that, that avoiding certain sins, certain actions that are deemed immoral, um, there is a goodness within that. There's a peace, there's a part of our well-being that comes into that. And I think that society nowadays actually skews a lot of what true well-being looks like. Um, there are a lot of empty promises within pursuing every instinct that we feel. There's, you know, I could say that eating a whole bar of chocolate sounds great or, you know, I mean, I can rarely find chocolate bars in the checkout lane now that aren't king size. And I think that there's definitely something to be said that through moderation, through prudence, we end up leading a healthier lifestyle by choosing to exercise. We are healthier. By choosing to take time away, by like meditating and prayer, we are spiritually and just like emotionally and mentally more balanced. There is definite, some, definitely something to say about the precepts that the church holds within allowing ourselves to follow their definition of morality and how that looks in our world. I have, I have received a lot of backlash about like, why would I become Catholic? Like all these priests are doing these terrible things and I can guarantee you, you will not find a single Catholic who says, I'm Catholic because those priests, you know, acted sexually inappropriately. I'm proud of those priests. They did exactly what they were supposed to do. That was a good thing that they did. You won't find it 
anywhere. It was com It's completely against church teaching when a priest acts that way. Not every priest is that way. In fact, it's a very small minority. And the media happens to skew a lot of stuff, even outside of the church. But anything dealing with morality, there's something that they do to put a twist on it. They, they are fear-mongering. We see it right now with the coronavirus. We see now all these doctors coming out saying how we need to not be taking such extreme measures. I just read a bunch of stuff about schools going back into session and trying to keep the kids away from each other and have them have their own cubbies and no playgrounds or cafeterias, even the classroom, only one teacher per kid like um, kids aren't supposed to change teachers and all of these different inane crazy uh, unrealistic ideas on what the CDC expects like have they ever met a preschooler and they want teachers to sit there and say no you can't be with each other stop touching they the school buses they want one kid per seat and skip row excuse me and skip rows and it's like, okay, so our school bus is going to run from like 3 a.m. to 8. They're going to do four extra runs. Or where's the funding going to come from to get extra buses? Some of these just ideas that go completely against what the church would teach. I just, last week I did the video on how government should govern according to the church, according to the Catholic church. And a lot of it plays into the common good. And some of that is, you know, we're allowed education, we are should be allowed to live out our vocation, and a bunch of different pieces. We're built for community. We are interdependent on all other human beings. And teaching an eight-year-old that they're not allowed to hug their friend, or that they're not supposed to share their toys, or if they have an extra pen to not loan it to the student sitting next to them who doesn't have a pencil, like... It just, there is so much retraining that is going to have to go on for these little children. I, I feel terrible for my one-year-old. I mean, she's 15 months old, and when she sees another kid out in public, she just runs up to them and wants to hug them. Like She is so sweet and so kind. Um, but recently, you know, she'll start to do it, and it's like, oh, no, honey, you got to come here, you know. And... It's sad to me. I want her to be able to express that. And it's a healthy, good, loving thing. And when she's around other children, I'm not enforcing her to, you know, people that we know. Or we went to pick up a place at and they had three kids. And I was like, we're going to be here for an hour. I'm not going to sit here and, like, have her screaming in my arms while we're taking this place set down because she cannot touch this these other children. Like... And there is definitely an element of it that is totally counterintuitive to having a healthy psyche, to having a healthy view of other humans, to basically inhibiting this idea that we are built for community, that everything in life is a risk. I received a lot of backlash about being against stay-at-home orders and just saying, you know, we should be allowed if we are comfortable, if we feel safe if we know that we aren't going to be with a at-risk person. Um, we should be able to take our children out. And a lot of people said, wow, this mom with, you know, she's pregnant and I can't believe she doesn't care more about her baby. And well, there's risk in driving my car too. So uh, how dare I go out and <laughs> have my child in the car where we could get in a car accident and something awful could happen, okay? There is risk in everything in life, and we have to be wise. We have to weigh pros and cons, and being Catholic in the 21st century, there is a certain element of risk that comes with that. Not so much in the United States as much as um, overseas, where Catholics are actively being persecuted, Christians in general, um, but there is still that risk of persecution, you know? In my video where I did talk about same-sex attraction recently, um, about how pornography could potentially influence homosexual attraction, um, I just received like a lot of backlash about it. And it's like, hey, it's my experience. I don't know, there's nothing wrong with sharing our experiences. And like, if your experience was different, great. I'm glad, like, I'm glad it, was different for you. I expect it to be. We're all individual human beings. 
But to try to discount other people's personal experiences is also not possible <laughs> because we all experience things in our own way. Like, and yeah. So anyway, um, but, but being Catholic in the 21st century is about so much more than how the media portrays Catholicism. And if you're Catholic, you know this. If you're considering becoming Catholic, I definitely just hope that you don't let the media narrative influence whether or not you ultimately decide to go down that road or not because the true center of Catholicism is the Eucharist. It is the fact that the physical body and blood of Christ is present with us every day. And there's something monumental, um, there's something almost magical, it's supernatural about that, that supersedes anything <laughs> that any member of the church could do that could take away from that. There is nothing that can detract from the fact that that is the body and blood of Christ. And next week, as I said, I'll be going through um, Dr. Petrie's Jewish Roots of the Eucharist book, um, and I will be talking about where we see the Old Testament and Old Jewish traditions, where we see that playing into the Eucharist, how we do know that Jesus didn't just mean it symbolically, that there is a physical presence that is within the bread and the wine after it is transubstantiated and consecrated. Um, and there is a major aspect to that. There, there is nothing in the media, there is nothing in the world, no singular member, no group of members that could change the fact that it is the body and blood of Christ. And ultimately, the Eucharist is what drew me to Catholicism. That was a big piece of it. Another piece was, how do I, how can I define morality? Because I've received questions about how can I, you know, people have said to me, how can you teach you? What seminary did you go to? What priestly scholar did you study under? These things, it's like, well, you know what? I don't have to know it all to share truth. I don't have to go get a PhD from Notre Dame and go and say, I have to learn Hebrew and Greek and do all of these translations all myself in order to be able to share that truth with others. That type of thinking and that type of um, attempt to pressure somebody into saying that they shouldn't be sharing truth about the church is honestly from the devil. It is not something that is from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit, like our, the great commission from Christ is to go forward and make apostles and baptize people in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The great commission was not go learn everything that there is to know about ancient Jewish tradition so that you can understand every single aspect and be able to preach from your own opinion of what you learned and how you interpret it and, and everything that you can take from it so that you can, you know, guide others to go to a seminary and become a rabbi and do all these things. We all have different passions. We all have different callings in life. And there is nothing that says that we, that says that I have to know everything and that I have to be a doctor and a scholar and I have to have all these things in order to be able to say the body and blood of Jesus is real. His true presence exists within the Eucharist. I don't need to go to school to understand that. I don't, you know, I can read a book. I can go based off of what I have learned, what what was passion to me, what has been passion to me, what, you know, there, there are a lot of different intricacies and there's always going to be something more that can be learned regardless of how much you study, regardless of who you study under. There's always going to be something else and there's always going to be a rebuttal back of saying, oh, well, you're talking about this. Well, have you gone to physics class? Do you know that two substances can't change? You're obviously not a physicist, so you can't be, you know, this like scholar on. <laughs> there's always going to be something that somebody tries to say that detracts from the truth that is within the Catholic faith. And even recently I posted on my Instagram how my husband and I, you know, we've we've known each other for about four years now. And, um, and when we first got married, there were people who were very negative about us getting married. They said that we didn't know each other and all these things. 
and I've I, I did this whole post on it about how like sometimes I feel this like resentment for them because when when times are rough when we're fighting when when things just aren't going right I go to that and I'm like oh maybe we did get married too soon maybe they were right maybe we should have listened to them why didn't I listen to them we should have just like called it off and all this stuff and it's like no that was a seed of doubt that was planted that was not from God it was it's from the devil, okay? The devil seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. And in those moments, that seed is what destroys any iota of happiness that I could find. But if that seed had not been planted, I have no doubt that a different seed of doubt would have taken root. There would have been something else that I watered in my head that would help me blame something else other than our lack of communication or my pregnancy hormones or you know my lack of sleep due to Evelyn or whatever it might have been. There would be a different seed of doubt that would be my primary focus in those hard times. And so this, it goes the same for the church. There's always going to be something that somebody somewhere could try to say to discourage you. There is something somewhere that you will find in the media that will attempt to contradict whatever point you're trying to make about the church, that will attempt to contradict saying masturbation is healthy for you. You're supposed to do it. You know, you will find article after article from this, from our society, from the 21st century that tries to say that you should pursue a uh, transgender, like gender change. But the truth is, is that that's not going to bring the fullness of joy. It's not going to bring the spirit of peace that only the Holy Spirit can offer. Because they're not from God. They're not from the one who has created us intricately, from the one who knows us better than anybody ever could. And the church, the Catholic church, honestly... I mean, at its roots, when you look at those roots, when you look at the catechism, that's too far away. It's like right there. I can't grab it. But if you look at everything that it teaches, at, at the depth that it has, at the centuries of history that are within those words, you'll see that morality is defined. It's defined for a reason. It, it, it goes far beyond these 21st century ideologies, and ultimately, with the Eucharist, you're talking from the beginning of time, from the beginning of humanity as it is known. There has always been the bread of the presence, or the bread of the face, right, is another way of saying it. I'll talk about it next week. But there is so much history within the church, and I don't have to have gotten a PhD to be able to share that with you. I don't have to know every single aspect and know how to read Hebrew and Greek and know all these things. I can take these people who have gone to school, who have taken the time to share their passion that they've had since they were little, I can take all of that and I can say they have seen this particular word that has been translated this way, but could be translated this way and that way. And this is where we see the initial roots of what we have today, about the primary focus of what the Catholic Church stands for, which is the Eucharist, which is the body and blood of Christ, which is that community that we are all longing for, that we are all seeking. And it is... You can't demolish it. And there's nothing that can be taken away or detracted from the fact that Christ is truly present with us today and he wants to bring you peace and he wants to bring us joy and he wants to be there with us through our walks and give us encouragement and like lead us away from the naysayers and into the hands and arms of those that will support us through our lives because that's what we need. And sometimes that support looks a little different than maybe we want it to, you know? It's not always just, oh, well, just do what feels right. Like, it's just so easy. And, I mean, that's, that's what addiction looks like. Addiction is always going to be, this is what feels right. It's what feels good. It's what feels natural. It's like, I remember when I smoked pot all the time, it's like, this is when I feel normal. It's when I don't smoke that I don't feel normal. And there is something 
very wrong with that picture because we are here, genuine. We don't need anything to alter our emotions or anything else when we are truly rooted in like allowing Christ to infiltrate our hearts and our minds because that's what he's there for. And um, yeah. So those are my thoughts for today about being Catholic in the 21st century. It's definitely a challenge, but a worthwhile one because when we start looking at eternal life, that's where all of it ultimately matters. That's what we're all working for. And whether we know it or not, I mean, we can deny the existence of anything as much and for as long as we want. But at the end of the day, either it exists or not. I could say I don't have milk in the refrigerator right now, but I do. And, but I can say that I don't all I want and never touch it. And that doesn't mean that it's not there. So just, um, yeah, keep your eyes on Christ and just, just keep breathing and know that everything that we're doing right now as Catholics, and if you're considering joining the faith, like don't let the media and society deter you from that. Just do your best to love people where they are. Don't take their comments too personally. And God will find a way to encourage you. And he will find a way to, you know, remove the prince of this world, who is the devil, who is here to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't have to succeed. We don't have to let him. So God bless you. Um, I am looking forward to talking to you guys then next week, Thursday at 3 p.m. for that book review. And until then, I pray that God is able to grant you the resources that you need to draw closer to him and to those around you. I hope you're able to make it a great day.